Does anyone know a good nursing home? Hello, Adam Ryan Donato. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another Heart Review, and I'm here to talk about the latest installment into the Indiana Jones franchise, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I'm against this movie even existing, right? Because first of all, we didn't bring back Steven Spielberg, but even more than that, it's an old dude. I don't want to see some old dude, <sighs> like, go throughout the movie. <sighs> you know what I mean? Like, you can clearly tell, obviously, throughout this movie, this is a very old dude who is not capable of doing most of these things. He got hurt walking on the steps the Millennium Falcon. He's not gonna fight Nazis anymore. It's ridiculous. I'm not even sitting here saying, oh man, they should have just made a younger Indiana Jones movie with another actor. Honestly, yeah, I'd rather have that than this, even though I think Harrison Ford is Indiana Jones and seeing anyone else do the role is kind of like, oh, it's like, give me the ick. And I also don't want a whole deep fake movie. Let's start off with a deep fake here, okay? That whole opening sequence, super cool in theory. I mean, it went on forever. Indiana Jones on a train trying to get through all of these Nazis. That's super cool. The deep fake though, I'm sitting there the entire 30 minutes thinking about the deep fake. I'm just sitting there watching his face and I'm like, yep, that's weird. That's super weird and I don't like that. Please stop. Because he sounds like an old man, right? Right? They still sounds like Harrison Ford today, even though he looks like Harrison Ford when he was like 30 or 40, 40, probably 40. He moves. Old Harrison Ford too. It's just dumb, bad, and I hate that they did it. I mean, obviously, at least fine. Harrison Ford's alive and you were able to get mostly Harrison Ford, except for his face, right? Fine, whatever. But I just still think it's really weird to do that it's, we're setting a really bad precedent for movies going forward. Just cast other actors. It's fine. We're not that dumb. We can connect the dots. So I hate that. It kind of reminds me of Jurassic Park where it's like, you guys sat there and thought about whether or not you could and you didn't stop to think whether or not you should. But whatever, some people like it. I'm sure if my dad watched this movie, he wouldn't even notice or like care. I mean, I'm sure he would notice to some degree, but just because of logic. Also, it just wouldn't bother him as much as it bothers me, which whatever. Phoebe Waller-Bridges was like a fine side character in this movie. She didn't really bother me at all, but I I also didn't like love her to any degree. Like she gives that whole thing like, oh, so I can be so independent and successful and capable. And it's like, I get it. You're a girl boss and that's great. But other than that though, it wasn't really like funny. It also wasn't like badass really in many ways. I don't know. I, I did like how she was like capable. She had her own agenda. She was able to run shit. She organized that entire like selling of her item thing. She was cool, but like not when they were trying to tell me that she was cool. She was just cool the rest of the time when she was actually just being cool. Like I get get it that we need to like push women to the forefront of these movies they're cool by just being cool you don't have to sit here and tell me that they're cool i already think that they're cool she has her own little short round in this movie which i thought was interesting and funny and weird but yeah obviously not as good a short round in any way shape or form and he has his old friend from the other movie who like shows up for a scene and like i heard he like didn't want to come back for the previous one because he didn't want to just do a cameo dude you did a cameo come on you're in like one scene maybe two tops like shut up and he added nothing this movie's way too long we need to cut stuff okay it's like two hours and 32 minutes, something like that. That's ridiculous. All the other Indiana Jones movies are just around two hours. Like, I think Temple of Doom is just an hour 58, you know? I think the longest ones, like, The Last Crusade is like, two hours and seven minutes. I mean, maybe King of the Crystal Skull is longer, but is that really a movie that you want to be comparing yourself to? Yeah, I went back and rewatched King of the Crystal Skull after watching this, and that's much better than this. Obviously, it's directed by Steven Spielberg, in contrast to James Mangold. And no disrespect to James Mangold. Logan's great. I love Ford v. Ferrari. did Walk the Line. It's funny, because they recently re-released the Pirates of the Caribbean out in theaters, and I I really think Gore Verbinski would be kind of the perfect choice to do a movie like this. You know, that chaotic, crazy, like real in-camera action. I think one of my favorite parts about this movie is the villain played by Mads Mikkelsen. I think he's really a great actor. I mean, I think it's really super lazy because obviously we all know that this is like Steven Spielberg's version of James Bond and that's all well and good. And I know, you know, Sean Connery plays his dad and like all the, you know, we get it. Literally stealing like the villain from one of the best James Bond movies. Some people would say the best James Bond movie, Casino Royale, and just taking the villain and being like yep he's a nazi haha -ha. super duper lazy and weird and whatever and you had to like really find a way to explain why there's nazis today and i don't know all that just didn't work for me but whatever his reasoning at the end that was kind of cool where he's like yeah well what i'm trying to do with the dial of destiny being a nazi like that all made sense and that's well and good but other than that though it just seemed like a convoluted thing and it's like well it's indiana jones so we have to have nazis and it's like no you don't the action sequences are pretty cool in this movie uh specifically the parade is a uh, visually pleasing sequence as well as like I said the Nazi train at the beginning of the movie there's a scene where they're like driving little cars in the desert type area that's all right the ending of the movie not really from an action perspective
perspective really great, but just really interesting where they went with it. I'm going to go ahead and talk spoilers about this movie, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. If you do not want to hear spoilers, stop listening. It's a four. I uh, know. Sorry. Ugh, God, it's a, it's a nice three. I'm being very nice by giving this a three. I should give it a two. If it exists, I won't condone it or I won't condemn it. I enjoyed watching it. I don't really think this is a movie I'm really going to seek out ever again. And when I'm watching the Indiana Jones movies, this is one that you kind of leave on the background just to be like, yeah, well, I just need to finish them. Please stop making these movies. Yes. All right, spoilers. So first of all, one thing I noticed is they address Shia LaBeouf's character. He tells a little story. He's like, yep, my son, I would go back in time and try to save my son from joining the military because he just did it just to spite me. And that's all fine and well and good to explain why Mutt isn't around. And I never wanted Mutt to take over anyway, so that's fine. At the end of the movie, we use the Dial of Destiny, obviously, as a time travel device. We go all the way back to like when Archimedes was alive and there's like this giant like war, but from the Romans? I don't know. I'm sorry, my history. I really don't know. It's just really funny because like, well, he's like, yeah, continental drift. He didn't know about continental drift. So obviously we're not going to end up where Hitler was because that's what the Nazi wanted to do. He wanted to go back and kill Hitler so that he could correct his mistakes. They end up going way, way, way thousands of years back in time and, you know, this big historical war that was happening. It's funny because they crash land and Indy's just like, I want to stay here. I love this war. It's always been a thing that I loved. I want to stay here and I don't know, hang out with Archimedes who wants me to stay here as well. And there's this causality loop because they see the watch on like the remains of a dead guy. It's the same watch that the bad guy has because they time traveled and it like caused it to happen. And that's all cute and whatever. My big thing with Indiana Jones is like, so it's fantastical. Like there's a arc that will melt your face. There is a temple where there's like voodoo dolls and they're ripping hearts out and crap. And then the third movie, there's a drink that makes you young or live forever, whatever. And the fourth movie, there's like extra dimensional beings, which that's a little bit jumping the shark, that and the nuke and the refrigerator, which whatever, who cares? This is in that realm, that same realm where it's like, all right, well, it's like fantastical, sure, but like it's grounded in some kind of reality. It still feels like a real, not a real thing that could happen, but it's not like too over the top where it's like, it doesn't fit with the realism of this franchise. I don't know, it's weird. Obviously time travel is not real, but like it fit, it worked for me. I don't know, I could see it not working for other people, but like when I'm thinking of Indiana Jones and like the mishaps that he gets in, especially in the third act of his movies, this was very congruent with that. In this movie, he's separated from his wife, Karen Allen, and like at the end of the movie, Phoebe Waller-Bridges, which by the way, her like insistence to have him come back with her, like yes, he needs to come back because that fabric of time and space. Why do you really desperately need him to come back with you? Yeah, he meets up with Karen Allen at the end and like they decide to be together again. His hat is out drying on the windowsill and he picks it up, puts it on and, and that's it. I much more prefer the ending of King of the Crystal Skull where he gets married and the mutt's about to put on the hat and it's like, nah, no one, nobody will take this away from me. This is my franchise. We leave the wedding and then that's it. The real ending of Indiana Jones is the ending of Last Crusade when we're riding off in the horses. That's how Indiana Jones ends. There's only three movies. Game of the Crystal Skull is not bad. That one I rewatched and I went up from a three to a four. I'm like, there's some really good things in this movie. Whereas this one, I was just like, yeah, there's some cool action sequences, but I kind of hate everything else about it. At the end of the day, it's a really good director, an actor who's really passionate about the franchise and this role and this character. So much money is being thrown into this movie. So obviously it's going to have some amount of good things about about it. If you're not like a big fan of the franchise, this is extremely skippable for you. But as a fan of the franchise, I'm giving it like a three. There's not much here for you unless you're like over the age of 60 and you think it's cool. Like it reminds me of a Liam Neeson movie where he's like super old and he beats everyone up and it's like, that's kind of like wish fulfillment for old people. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna beat up everybody. It belongs on a museum. They kind of try to make him like relatable in this one. Like you see him with his shirt off and he looks like the Joker, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. And it's like weird and like, like sickly looking cause he's super old. It's all bony and creepy looking. Looking. He becomes this like grumpy old man and like I think they're trying to give us some kind of arc here But like Indiana Jones doesn't really arc, you know, he's not really relatable I can't relate to Indiana Jones. I don't hunt treasure. I also hate snakes. I'm no good in a fight I would totally succumb to the Temptations of whatever device or money or whatever. Yeah, I'm poor and I would love that money I would never be like ah, it belongs in a museum and that's why he's better than us And that's why he's cool to watch So when they try to make him like all relatable at the beginning of this movie, I was like no Also, I got a lot of Toy Story vibes from this one because one of my favorite things about this movie is how you know he's walking around and we're obviously we're going to space there's a space parade he sits in the train and there's a little kid with a space helmet next to him and it's like oh it's kind of like woody you know our action hero from before who you know had wild wild west going out there riding horses trying to find mythical objects and things that are earth-based type of adventures and now that's not the craziest frontier the craziest frontier is in the stars and we're you know we're going to space and this is crazy new thing so now not only is he feeling like old because he's old but he's feeling 
old because what he does, what he thinks is cool, is completely outdated and, you know, being supplanted by the new tech and going to space and whatnot. And I wish the movie would, like, learn the lesson that it's just trying to say, right? I thought it was, like, a cool little thing for this movie and this character, but, like, also, like, I just don't want this movie to exist. I don't need it. Please stop. If you like this movie, that's great, and I'm happy that you like it. I, it's never a good thing to not like something. It is always good to like things. No fun to be picky. Okay, so I'm jealous that you get to like this. Thank you so much for watching this review. Three out of five for Indiana Jones The Dial of Destiny. Like, comment, subscribe, and tell me what your favorite Indiana Jones movie is. I'm gonna rank them right now off the top of my head. Obviously, actually, it's pretty easy. Dial of Destiny's at the bottom because boo. Then Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is a four star. It's at the four. And then the top three, they're all five star movies. I don't know. I'm in the middle of Temple of Doom right now, and I'm probably a five. It's pretty cool. But Raiders is the best. Then Last Crusade, then Temple of Doom. But Temple of Doom's kind of wacky and fun, but it, yeah, not all those parts really fit well together. So, Maybe, I don't know. We'll see how I feel after this rewatch of the franchise. Dun, 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 dun!